Assalamu alaikum and welcome to lecture number 16. Uh, in this lecture, we are going to talk about the frequency response for rational system functions and we also consider an example where we have a single pole or zero. So uh, today we are going to discuss about the frequency response for a rational system functions. So the uh, if an LTI system is stable and has the rational system function then its frequency response has the form uh, this one. So we can express this uh, response in the factored form so if you recall equation 13 in the previous lecture, I have written here, here. so h of z equals to b0 over a0, and that's product k running from m up to n, and we have this expression. I hope that's very uh, clear to you, and it's quite straightforward. Now, using the same uh, expression, if we replace z by e of j omega, so we can obtain the frequency response in the factored form. Thus replacing a z by e of j omega in this equation. So this equation can be written as e of uh, right e of e uh, h of e to the power j omega. This is equal to uh, b naught or a naught and product k running from one up to m. Again here we have z inverse. So z inverse is basically z equals to e power j omega then z inverse will be equal to e power minus j omega. So uh, we have the corresponding values that are equal to uh, 1 minus ck e power j omega. Similarly, for the denominator case, again, we have product k running from 1 up to n, 1 minus dk e power j omega. So you understand that h of either h of j omega or z of uh, or z, h of z, they both are complex, so we can represent them in terms of uh, magnitude and phase. Okay, so expressing this in terms of magnitude, you understand how do you take the magnitude for the complex number? So, simple you take the uh, square of the real plus square of the imaginary and you take the square root of the whole that results into the magnitude. So, h of e j omega absolute of this equals to magnitude of this factor and uh, magnitude of the individual factors that's those in the involved in the numerator and those involved in the denominator so simply we can say that uh, the magnitude is simply product of the magnitudes of all zeros of factors of h of z evaluated on the unit circle and divided by a product of the magnitudes of the all poles factored factors uh, evaluated on the unit circle you understand why we take the unit circle because we say the system is stable so if a system is stable then uh, in terms of if you talk about the uh, impulse response so its impulse response mu must be absolutely summable or it must result into some finite value sometimes it's uh, convenient to consider a magnitude squared of the system function so if we take the square of the magnitude that means because this is complex so you understand if we have complex uh, number or com complex quantity then squaring it is equal to the uh, product of the number uh, with the uh, conjugate of the number so for example we have a complex number to just to give you an idea so we have for example a complex number z such that z equals to a plus j b so I can write like z absolute square equals to 
z multiply by z uh, conjugate so we can see that basically this is equal to so you understand we obtain the conjugate by replacing the imaginary part with the negative sign right so that means uh, z multiply by that we can write a plus j b times a minus j b right so it will result into you understand a multiply by b, a, a plus b times a minus b results into a square plus b square so basically this is the square of the magnitude because the magnitude of z equals to uh, a square plus b square whole square root thus considering the magnitude square the equation on the previous slide can be modified and we have now that uh, again the same term right that's square so b naught over a naught that's the scaling factor and then we have product k running from 1 up to m then in terms of uh, zeros so we can replace them by the product of their conjugates that's 1 minus c k e power minus j omega times 1 minus c uh, complement times e power minus j omega so you can notice the symbol here you understand because we are taking the conjugate so that means we have negative here so the negative it will be positive here again as it is mentioned here so similarly a uh, similar arguments apply to the uh, poles also so again we have dk e power j omega and then the reciprocal of uh, the conjugate of this will be uh, dk steric steric represents the conjugate so if the poles are real then dk equals to dk steric but if they are uh, complex then they can have the uh, conjugates right so again similarly e power minus j omega that's complex so it will be e power j plus omega okay, i'm sorry e uh, to the power plus j omega uh, we represent the gain or the attenuation in db db means decibel right so to express the gain or attenuation uh, in db we multiply the uh, we take the log and multiply it by a factor of 10 so if we go back to the previous equation there we had e, h of ej omega square so if i take log of that multiply by <clears throat> 10 log of that okay so it will because this is the square here so it will come here the power becomes the coefficient in log so that means it will be 20 log of 10 uh, h of ej omega so again because this term is squaring i hope you understand that that uh, if i write something like so for example we have some number uh, b power m and we take log so it will be equal to log of b power m to the base 10 that will be equal to because in log the powers become the coefficient so it will come here and it will be simply m times log of uh, b to the base 10 so again because here we have h of j omega square and we are converting it into decibels so even if we take the decibels then we multiply take the log and multiply the, by the factor of 10 so that means the 2 here which was power will come here become coefficient and we already have 10 so 10 into 2 will result into 20 so we have 20 log of uh, frequency response to the base 10 so coming to the right hand side of the equation there we had b naught a naught power 
2 so that power again comes so I hope you understand with the factor of 20 because for conversion we just multiply 10 and then we log uh, of the whatever quantity we are taking we are going to express in db so that is the equation for expressing any quantity in db okay so again because we have some multiplication uh, there because we have uh, represented the uh, frequ uh, frequency response in factored form so that means we had uh, if you recall some we had product k running from 1 up to n 1 minus uh, c k e power j omega and so on so expressing it into db you understand the second rule of the logarithmic is that uh, multiplication becomes addition so all those factors they will be now just added okay so we'll have the first term as it is because this first term or the scaling term that was multiplied with the remaining uh, the, these terms so now it will be added so we'll have k running from 1 up to m and for the uh, product now we have the summation sign so that will be 20 log of this so i hope that's quite straightforward you have done these type of calculations so many times so there will be there should be no issue but still if you have any confusion we can discuss in the live session okay the function 20 log of this is known as the log magnitude of h of j omega and uh, this is expressed in db so you understand right so it is also uh, known as gain in db so that's straightforward equation that you just say gain in db so that's equal to 20 and log of uh, whatever quantity you have to the base 10 so that's your gain if that is the amplifier or something like this or it is in the pass band of the filter then we'll call it a gain so it will have some positive value whereas in case of the uh, uh, attenuation we have for example if it uh, this uh, is in the uh, stop band area of the filter then we'll call it uh, attenuation so it will have negative sign so you understand 0 db will have uh, if the there's no uh, uh, magnitude response equals to 1 in this in that case if we take the uh, if we express this one in decibels then it will result into 0 db because uh, log of 1 to the base 10 will result into 0 and 0 multiplied by anything will result into 0 so that's why 0 db means a system which have uh, magnitude response equal to 1 similar so I, th I think you can do this by yourself So similarly, as I said in the previous man, uh, previous slide, for the attenuation case, we will have negative here, and we expresses as as it is. So we just write minus 20 log of uh, frequency response to the base 10. So that we will call it gain in dB. So because negative here, negative sign uh, signifies that basically it refers to the attenuation. So because in case of attenuation, uh, h, e, j, omega absolute always have a value that is less than 1. So uh, you understand when something is 1, then its log will uh, result into some negative value. And we already have a negative value here. So it will result into some positive value. So for example, if the, uh, if the response uh, of the system for some particular frequencies is 0 0.001 then that will result into uh, some negative value and uh, negative and already negative here will result into positive so we'll have for example 60 db attenuation you understand why we take the log so that simplifies the uh, calculations and that's also uh, easy to read because for very very small uh, values the expressing it in log will result into some uh, easy to read number. Similarly, for very, very large values, for example, 1 million, 2 million, or maybe 
more again if you take express it in the logarithmic scale so it will result into some small number that will be easy to uh, read the other advantage is that uh, the frequency response and db is added to the log magnitude of the input Fourier transform to the log magnitude of the output Fourier transform so that means because uh, uh, when we uh, take the find the output so in Fourier domain the output equals to the uh, input uh, response times the input so if we express it in a, a db or in log then simply it will be addition of the response with the input signal so that means the effects of both magnitude and phase are additive now which were previously in <clears throat> product form so now let's uh, talk something about the phase response for the rational system functions so the phase response of a rational system function has the form you understand why this is because uh, when you find the uh, phase okay so phase is just simply the uh, tan inverse of the imaginary over the real right so because we have the system function in the product form so that means uh, sorry in the fact uh, in the factored form so that means the overall uh, phase of the system will be equal to the uh, individual phases in the uh, numerator minus the uh, individual phases in the uh, summation of the individual phases in the denominator or you can also say that uh, the uh, it will be summation of the phases uh, introduced by the zeros minus the summation of the phases introduced by the poles so we can simply write because the <coughs> Uh, rational system function consists of the scaling factor that is b naught or a naught so we have the phase produced by this one plus the phases of this one and again minus the phases these are the uh, denominator are the phases introduced by the poles so you understand why we take the negative sign or let me show you an example so that you understand why we take them with a why we take the poles with a negative number so because all these numbers are multiplied so that means the phase here okay phase introduced by z naught the overall phase of the numerator will be phase introduced by z naught plus phase introduced by z1 plus phase introduced by z2 and here again the overall phase will be phase produced by z3 plus z4 so because they are sum so when you bring it here they will be subtracted so overall phase of this one will be something like z uh, okay i just write angle of z that will be equal to angle of z naught plus angle of your yeah, or argument of z1 plus argument of z2 right and again minus argument of z3 minus argument of z4 so you understand we can write it in the summation form like we have expressed it here and similarly for the uh, phases introduced by the poles are subtracted so next topic is the group delay for the rational system function you understand that uh, group delay is basically a useful representation of the phase now to find the group delay you understand we just uh, take the derivative of the phase with respect to the uh, frequency because we are in the frequency domain so straight away we can say that group delay 
uh, of h of e j omega equals to uh, uh, summation k running from 1 up to n because these are the zeros so we take for the each factor of the zero the group delay and you understand group delay is basically the derivative of the argument of uh, argument right so uh, that means we have uh, so because uh, in definition we have group delay equals to negative of the derivative of the uh, argument okay so that's why the uh, poles they have positive sign whereas the uh, zeros uh, they have the negative sign then again you understand there are two types of phases maybe we can call it two types of phases right that is the continuous phase and the uh, principal value of the phase and you understand the continuous phase is basically continuous function of the omega whereas in case of the principal value because we find the uh, phase using the tan inverse uh, function so that gives us the value between 0 and 2 pi and uh, because integer multiple of 2 pi will result uh, addition of integer multiple will not affect the uh, complex number so that's why whether you are using calculator or you just find using the tan inverse equation we always get the uh, principal value and you understand principal value is limited to uh, 2 pi it's not continuous function of the omega so because we have done this already so to obtain the continuous function of omega you just take the principal value and add 2 pi r omega with it so that will result into the continuous phase so with this we end the discussion on the magnitude log magnitude or the uh, phase and the uh, group delay so let's have an example right uh, for the frequency response and uh, in this particular example we assume we have a single pole r a zero <clears throat> so that's the generalized thing and we just say we have a factor that is a uh, single factor and we have one minus it's equal to one minus uh, r e power j theta e power minus j omega where r is the radius and theta is the angle of whether it's a pole r0 in the z plane now this is a typical uh, of either a pole r0 at radius r and angle theta in the z plane so taking the square magnitude of this factor will result into uh, you understand that we can represent it as the this uh, factor multiplied by the uh, conjugate of this one so that will be 1 minus r g j theta e power minus j omega times 1 minus r e power right because we are conjugating it so all those terms that involve uh, imaginary part will be uh, will have inversion in the sign so it was j theta now it will become minus j theta and this is it was minus j omega now it will become e j omega so by taking the product we'll find this is basically equal to 1 plus r square minus 2 r cos omega minus theta so let's uh, find the magnitude response in db so uh, you understand this thing that's quite straightforward right so again finding the uh, expressing the uh, magnitude response in the db right so that will be you understand we'll just multiply it by uh, 10 and we take the log of that so that means the right side will also be multiplied by 10 10 to the log of this plus this so that this is the 
magnitude response of this single zero or pole okay again the principal value uh, phase is obtained by taking the uh, tan inverse so tan inverse real or imaginary will give us the uh, principal value of the phase similarly group delay can be found by taking derivative of all right minus uh, d upon d omega of this thing so that will result into this so let's see the magnitude response as a function of omega for different values of theta so to do this we just assume uh, we take r equals to 0 0.9 in that case when we put 0 0.9 this is uh, i have written again here the equation uh, 20 so by putting this can be simplified as so because these are multiplied so you understand the powers will be added so that means we have uh, 20 log of 10 1 minus r and this will become j theta minus omega now uh, assuming r equals to 0 0.9 and uh, we'll have a uh, dips sharply in the vicinity of omega equals to theta when omega equals to theta so that means theta minus this will result into 0 anything power 0 will result into 1 and we have 1 minus r now because we have uh, fixed r equals to 0 0.9 so 1 minus 0 0.9 will result into uh, uh, 0 0.1 now log of 0 0.1 is equal to um, minus 1 so that means 20 multiplied by minus 1 will result into minus 20 so for r equals to 0 0.9 the minimum value we will have is minus 20 db So, and the solid line shown here is for the theta equals to 0, when theta equals to 0 and this is uh, frequency, so when frequency is also 0 at that point they are equal, so we'll have minus 20 dB of gain. Similarly, we'll have uh, maximum value when omega minus theta is pi so this is the point because for the solid line we assume theta equals to zero so that means the difference will be omega minus zero so that means omega equals to pi so when omega equals to pi this is the point and it will have the maximum value so again because uh, by putting omega equals to pi it will result into uh, e power minus uh, j pi because uh, so in the um, rectangular form we can write it as cos of r into cos of pi minus j sine of pi sine of pi is zero so that will result into minus r into cos of pi and cos of pi equals to minus one so it will be one minus minus r will become 1 plus r and 1 plus r is basically uh, 1.09 so 1.09 will have the uh, the log and it will result into 5.57 db so here this is 5 db so it's slightly higher than this one so that's 5.57 db again if we take theta equals to pi by 2 so you can uh, do the calculations for that so when theta equals to pi by 2 so it will have peak at omega equals to 0 so when omega equals to 0 again we have theta equals to pi by 2 so pi by 2 is basically uh, 90 right so we'll have uh, cos of 90 plus j sine of 90 so uh, it will be cos of 90 is 0 so we'll have r times sine of 90 
thus by putting values uh, you can find the values of the magnitude for all these right i hope you can do it by yourself so also you can assume that theta equals to uh, pi and then you put in here you can find the different points where you can get the maximum and minimum value so it will have minimum value when theta equals to pi by 2 and the uh, omega equals to uh, pi so i hope that's uh, quite straightforward you can do the uh, analysis by yourself you just plug in the values you are you are, you are given all the values and uh, depending upon different values of theta that is 0 pi by 2 or pi you can obtain and analyze these curves the second thing is the phase as a function of omega so the phase is 0 at omega equals to theta if you observe the graph so for fixed r which is 0 0.9 the function shifts with theta so using equation uh, 21 you can find the values of the uh, phase that is in radians versus the frequency so for example the so here solid curves represents the uh, when theta equals to zero so you put an equation 21 theta equals to zero so when omega is zero it will be zero when omega will increase the theta will start increasing right so i think these are quite uh, straightforward things so still if you have any confusion we can discuss in the class then comes the third parameter that is group delay as a function of omega so we have high uh, slope of the phase around uh, omega equals to, C, uh, to theta which corresponds to a large negative peak in the group delay function at omega equals to theta so again we have t three different values of the theta that is 0 pi by 2 and pi vector diagrams are the geometric constructions of the pole zeros are also very helpful in inferring the uh, response information so let's consider uh, a first order system of the form h of z equals to 1 minus r e power j theta z power minus 1 which can also be uh, written as z minus r e j theta over z you understand i just take the z inverse common from here so when i take z inverse common so here it is one then it's multiplied by z power plus one so it will be z power minus one one minus r e j theta right or z or z power minus one is also it can be written as divided by z so this is equivalent to this i think that's quite straightforward so for r is less than one uh, if we look at this equation we have a zero when z equals to uh, z equals to r e j theta and we have poles when z equals to uh, zero So looking at the diagram, we have three vectors, V1, V2, and V3. So V1 is basically e power j omega. And it is a polar vector because it, it connects a pole with the unit circle. 
right so because we have a pool at z equals to zero so okay and we have zero at z equals to r e j theta similarly we have v2 vector which is drawn here and uh, it connects the uh, zero and we have another third vector that is v3 which is equal to uh, v1 minus v2 so this is v1 equals to e j omega and v2 equals to r e j theta so we have v3 equals to e j omega minus r j theta The magnitude of the complex number e j omega minus r e j theta divided by e j omega is the ratio of magnitudes of the vectors that is v3 and v1. So we can write that r e j theta uh, times e minus j omega this is equal to uh, magnitude of e j omega minus r j theta divided by e j omega now because you know e j omega minus r j theta this is equal to v3 and this one equals to v1 so we can write it as a ratio of v3 and v1 so uh, because the ab absolute value of v1 which is e j omega you understand is 1 so that means the uh, magnitude of this is basically equal to v3 so the contribution of a single pole factor 1 minus r j theta z inverse to the magnitude function at the frequency omega is length of the zero vector v3 so this vector will have a minimum length when uh, omega equals to theta and also because in this case pole lies at zero at z equals to zero it doesn't have a significant effect on uh, in fact any effect on the magnitude response so as i said on the previous uh, slide that the zero vector has minimum length when uh, theta and omega are equal so you understand this is uh, omega and this one is theta so either bring it here so at this point they will be same and the length of the zero vector will be minimum r if the uh, v2 right if i bring v2 here so it at this point but anyway in general anywhere when theta and omega are same the they, they are collinear and the uh, v3 or zero vector will result into zero now the phase angle of this will be equal to uh, this year uh, right so this is equal to angle or the argument of e j omega minus r e j theta over e j omega right so because they are uh, this is numerator so the overall angle for this one will will be equal to angle of numerator which is this one minus the angle of denominator which is uh, e j omega now angle of e j omega you understand this is the angle so uh, i can write it here so angle of ej omega is basically omega and the angle of ej omega minus r ej theta which is v3 so it has angle right this angle so we represent this by phi 3 so that means the overall angle for this will be equal to phi 3 minus omega so the phase function is equal to the difference between the angle of the zero vector that is phi 3 and the angle of the pole vector from the pole at z equals to 0 to the point z equals to ej omega so this one right 
so because the angle of the pole vector is omega so i hope that's quite straightforward okay see you in the last section allah hafiz